thinking about self-publishing and don't know where to start? Join the Spa Girls each week for 30 minutes of honest advice, tips and resources. I'm Trudy J. I'm Shah Barrett. I'm Cheryl Phipps. And I'm Wendy Bella. And we are here with another exciting guest. <laughs> <laughs> this week we have AK Mulford. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Thanks Thanks for for Ellie. Yeah. So hey, Ellie, Ellie, we're going to be calling you Ellie for today, but AK Mulford is an awesome fantasy author who is also doing really, really well on TikTok. And so we want to talk about that, but I'm going to read your bio first and then we're going to get into it. So AK Mulford is a best-selling fantasy author and former primatologist who swapped rehabilitating monkeys for writing novels in New Zealand. I see they're almost the same kind of career. I mean, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> so much crossover. <laughs> <laughs> Mulford is inspired to create diverse stories that transport readers into new realms of imagination, making them fall in love with fantasy for the first time or all over again. She now lives in Wellington with her husband and two young human primates, hoarding more books than she could ever read and making ridiculous TikToks. Yay! Welcome. So that's really We're cool. Very Welcome. lucky to have you well, here, thank Ellie. Thank you for having yeah. me on. It's nice talking to people in the same country. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we're excited. We're excited about that. We were we were excited when we were trying to look around for someone to talk to us about TikTok. It was like, yeah, we're going to pick the person in New Zealand. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we don't have to convert the times. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> so, so to start with, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? How you went from dealing with monkeys to <laughs> dealing with imaginary monkeys I don't yeah mm. and and how you got into self-publishing I really need to start adding more monkeys into my <laughs> fantasy <book. laughs> there's too much knowledge going unused but yeah so I like most people you know have been writing my whole life and had all of the journals of stories from being a kid and I flirted with the idea of making writing a career on and off for years and years and years but kind of always went towards biology you know the quote-unquote more stable jobs and and things like that and um, working in conservation but became a self-publishing kind of hobbyist on the side where I'd be reading all the books and doing all the courses and listening to all of the podcasts and thinking maybe one day I will actually do this thing while living in the jungle and working with monkeys. (laughs) And so (laughs) I moved to New Zealand. I met a Kiwi guy, you know, the classic story, moved to New Zealand. And I moved more into visitor engagement and training people how to create engaging content for conservation, which ended up actually being very helpful for TikTok and and marketing um, from an author perspective. But I think like most people during the pandemic, I thought, you know, now's the time I'm, you know, a stay at home mom and have two little kids. And I wanted to think of something that I could do creatively to um, kind of put myself out there. And I thought, you know, I'd been dabbling with the idea for over a decade and I thought now's the time. Um, So I started doing all the things, the website, the newsletter, all of the stuff. And about a year ago, as I was walking down the street to the dairy, um, or I should say the corner shop for <laughs> non- <laughs> We know what dairy means. You know so what I mean. We're on the page. Not, non-New Zealand listeners. And I was listening to the Spa Girls and oh, you were man. making a joke about TikTok. And I thought, oh, you know, I love TikTok. I love watching it, but maybe I'll give it a go. Maybe I'll post a video and see what happens. Cut to, you know today where you're I have, welcome uh, thank you. <laughs> I I mean, we didn't take our advice <laughs> I know I was looking for you on there and you weren't there <laughs> so yeah and, and here we are yeah wow. awesome awesome and so okay so let's break it down let's let's get right into TikTok let's, yeah. what is what is TikTok explain it for people who are not on there and are scared sure. of it It is a social media platform that's video based and quite song music based as well. It used to be a music app and then kind of had a new facelift and turned into what it is today. Um, And so creators make these short videos and create content and it can be about, I mean, there is a TikTok account for just about any possible thing you could imagine from like 
a Lord of the Rings account speaking Elvish to machines crushing inanimate objects. You know, there's there's a TikTok account for it. Um, but one kind of world within TikTok is called Book Talk. And that is a whole community of readers and authors who love books and love connecting with other people about bookish things. Mm -hmm. So that is the kind of world within the larger TikTok worlds that I live in. Yeah. 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 Because it started out, it was like a dance platform. I remember yeah, yeah. hearing that the yeah, music kids were like doing dance <laughs> things. And I was like, I'm not going to dance. Room. All, dance. all of us older people were like, <laughs> yeah. You know, like, but it's, but it's not, yeah, yeah. It's I remember not my nephew showing me like his little dances and lip syncing to songs. And I thought, oh, well, that's a bit silly. Cut to me, <laughs> you know, doing all of those things too. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's just, he was right. It was more fun, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's something about the short video of it. Like it can be like eight seconds people are talking about, you know, like you. Oh, yeah. totally. In and, fact, and I think those are better to do the, like, the, especially when you're just starting out on TikTok, doing shorter videos, I think is better because you have to edit yourself down, especially if you're talking. If you're lip syncing to a song or something, it can kind of be longer because the listener or viewer already knows that what's coming. Mm -hmm. um, they've already heard that sound and so they'll stick around to see your take on it. But if you're just speaking, people have a very short attention span on TikTok. Yeah. It's, it's, about, it's about up to 12 seconds, isn't it? That's about. The, yeah, yeah. So you have premium. the option of yeah. doing 15 seconds, one minute mm -hmm. or three minutes. Mm -hmm. And I would say stay away from three minutes unless mm -hmm. you have like a title over your head that says uh, how I got bitten by a shark or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. You know, people yeah. are going to stick around the three minutes to hear that story. Yeah. But yeah. unless you have that, don't do it. And I think it's actually pretty intuitive for authors because we already do that in the written form. You know, we're thinking about blurbs and like, how can I hook people in from the very first line? How can I be more concise with my wording? You know, all of those things, like how do I keep people engaged till the very end of this blurb yeah. is the same with how do I keep people engaged to the end of this TikTok, you know? So true. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so what make, okay, so we've talked about why you first got into TikTok. So you were already watching TikToks before you. Yeah, made yeah. TikTok lunch? yeah. Yeah. You know, it was one of those things where you know you're sitting on the couch at the end of the day watching cartoons with your kids and sending your partner funny TikToks about you know different things uh, that just make you have a little giggle and so I was already familiar with the platform but not from a content creation perspective yeah I think you can make it whatever you want it to be but for me TikTok is also quite funny like yeah. like that's the whole, a big part of it is to kind of just be amusing and yeah 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 for sure I think that you, uh, you know, for me, I'm always very conscious of how I want to make my followers feel and the people watching my videos feel. Mm. And for me, it's about having fun and being lighthearted and maybe a little cheeky and yeah. you know, having a little bit of a laugh. And I always want the people watching my videos to feel like they are in on the joke, whatever oh, that yeah. may be, you know, mm. it's never directed at them or at someone else. It's like we're having fun together in community. Mm. And so that was... Um, something that I kind of consciously curated on my page, whereas mm. other creators might be kind of like have very witty humor or be a bit snarky or, you know, mm. have these beautiful graphics and are like <laughs> heaps of gorgeous makeup and do these gorgeous dance videos, you know. So it's just about creating content that is organic and authentic to you. I know mm. authentic is kind of like a buzzword, mm. but just meaning the things that feel fun for you to be mm. creating. So, yeah, and quite often don't, sorry, go share. I was just going to say, so, so it's about creating a brand that's you, isn't it? Exactly. Mm. Yeah, for sure. And for me, you know, I, I, if I tried to be kind of like a little bit like mean and snarky, it just wouldn't work because that yeah. is just not who I am at all. Yeah. I like mm. being, you know, kind and silly and a little bit of a hot mess and, you know, joking with people about uh, wearing the same hoodie all week and drinking too much coffee and, you yeah. know, like mm. connecting yeah. with people on that level. And then also yeah. my love of fantasy books. Yeah. So can we talk about the platform itself and how that works and how sure. you, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of it before we go on? Yeah, sure. Do you want to, like as far as posting videos? Yeah, you something? know, and what, what you can get when you get on there and these filters and all these other things. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So that's two two. So let's talk about the general part, the general platform, and then the posts themselves, like the specific okay. aspects of that, like how to post something or that kind of thing. So 
stat gener general and move in? Yeah, sure. So when you create a, an account on TikTok, you can start off with, you know, you have like most social media platforms, you have your photo, you have a, a few hundred, you know, characters you can use to have a little bio. Once you have over a thousand followers, or if you have a business account, you can have a link in your bio, you know, to a link tree or things like that. And, um, and so you can set it up that way and then you can start posting videos on your feed um, on your page and then you also have two kind of like feeds of videos that you can watch so there's the for you pay uh, for you page which is a feed of videos that TikTok is suggesting to you to watch and then there's your following feed which is the people that you've followed the accounts that you've followed to watch and so those are kind of when you hear people talk about scrolling through TikTok they're usually scrolling through one of those two pages and that's usually where you start to get your inspiration for sounds or fun trends or things that are going on that you think oh that might be fun I want to see if I can do something with that that sound and things like that and it's also where you start to kind of consciously curate the type of TikTok videos you want to be shown so if, you know, I've been caught out before where I just watched too many cooking videos and TikTok started mm -hmm. suggesting me only cooking videos and not book videos. So mm -hmm. being aware of when you're using your author account that you're looking at book videos, that you're connecting and commenting and liking videos that are about your genre and the readers who like the kind of books you write. And so you're, you're basically curating your feed and training the algorithm to show you the kind of videos that you want to engage with for your business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would you have, a, if you wanted to do this, you wanted to watch the cooking videos, your suggestion yeah. would be to have a separate Another account. account. Yeah. And that's pretty easy to do, isn't it? It's just an, uh, yeah, yeah. A, I've, I've never done it. A separate but... email, but, mm -hmm. or like a separate email or phone or login of some sort, but I just have the one and mm -hmm. I just let them show me the cooking videos sometimes, mm -hmm. but I always make sure to interact more with the uh, book, book talk videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So when you're starting out, should you have a business account if you're doing it as an author or do you just have a normal? I, I have a creator account. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do a lot with the creator accounts um, and you can still use it for, th for your business in mm. ways, but you're not taking things directly mm -hmm. and saying like, um, you know, if like you can't take somebody's trending song as McDonald's, for example, and and mm -hmm. put buy McDonald's over it, you know, you have to, those businesses need to have business accounts and then those business accounts will limit the amount of sounds and different mm -hmm. things they can have access to because they're using it for that. So I would suggest using it more for uh, content creation and having a creator account where you can still have access to all of the sounds and things like that and use it more like other TikTok content creators do where they still might have, you know, merch or uh, things that they're doing, small business accounts, Etsy shops, things like that, but they still have access to all of the sounds. Mm -hmm. And do hashtags play a big part in TikTok? Like, is they on can. Twitter and things? They can, but they're, they're a little bit, they're a little bit different, even just selecting the right sound. Um, to have over your video or to be lip syncing to probably does a lot more than the hashtags themselves. Mm -hmm. I do have this suspicion that I haven't been able to verify anyway, but that certain hashtags do get kind of like suppressed and not mm -hmm. used as much as other yeah. ones, especially ones that are, um, you know, author related or like mm -hmm. business related. Um, because I'm, you know, assuming that eventually TikTok's going to move more and more into a pay to play model of having advertising and things like that and so um they don't want your videos to <laughs> go out as much if you're not um you know paying to get them in front of people so using more book related hashtags tend to do better and even yeah. things like using the biggest ones sometimes don't work well like using hashtag book talk mm. can sometimes not work mm. um but if you use hashtag you know, bookworm or bookish or something like that, you actually get pushed out to a lot more people. So that's something, you know, I think all uh, indie authors love A-B testing, you yeah. know, right? Yeah, we exactly. all do it. So it's just one of those things where you put out two videos with two different sets of hashtags and see which one does better mm -hmm. yeah. and can kind of, you know, go from there. Yeah. Do you have a rule of thumb of how many hashtags you would use on a post? 
Uh, it depends on how good I think I've done the video. <laughs> if, I think, if I think the video is really engaging and very entertaining, I'll put fewer hashtags on it because I feel like it doesn't need as many hashtags to get seen. Uh, whereas if I think it's kind of like, nah, you know, not so good, I'll put more hashtags onto it. So it really depends. And how many posts do you do a day? I do two a day per day so usually one in the morning and one midday which is usually midday and afternoon in our evening time in the u.s which is where most of my followers are mm-hmm. can you so. talk about how the algorithm works for that like how the- yeah i feel like the algorithm gets talked about the way we talk about the weather you know it's just <laughs> oh, like yeah. how's the algorithm today you know <laughs> how's it doing for you oh you know it's pretty wild the past week you know so um you know it's all a bit mysterious and I think people give more credit to the algorithm sometimes for videos being good or bad than they deserve you know yeah. you, go, you were just kind of ranting at the camera for three minutes that's why that video didn't do well not the algorithm <laughs> Um, you know, so, but it is the, basically the algorithm is trying to show people the content they think they'll like, right. And Mm -hmm. engage with. Um, and so for us as content creators, we're trying to show, get the algorithm to show our videos to the right people. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's kind of like the whole game and it, it does, TikTok does know the videos you watch, whether you like them or comment on them. So you do have some people who will be like, oh, it's just a bunch of like you know dancing teenagers and, well, and you kind of have to say home. yeah mm-hmm. you have to say those are the videos you're watching then you yeah. know <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of call them out on it and say well yeah. then that's it knows mm. that you know it's yeah. showing you those yeah, yeah. videos those job. Ones yeah. Yeah. so yeah. yeah if that's so one, your for you page that's yeah. why <laughs> yeah because the one thing I and, I'm, and correct me if I'm wrong because it's just I'm not an expert here but I, my understanding was that it's okay to put like sort of three four videos up in a day on TikTok mm-hmm. because they actually send each video out to different groups they don't actually yeah. they're not sending it to the same people each time yeah. which is why you know versus somewhere like Instagram or right. Facebook where it goes out to the same people and you can kind of get that fatigue it on TikTok really it depends doesn't. on how many people initially watch that video mm-hmm. so if you get the first hundred people who it shows your video to to watch it all the way through, like it, comment on it, it's going to show another hundred people. And if those people engage with it, it's going, and that's how you get these viral videos that blow up because everybody's engaging with the video. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's more about like how you want to get people to watch your videos to the end, because whoever's on at the time are going to be the ones they're showing it to, not necessarily people who are following you uh, 12 hours later. So Mm -hmm. They might see it if they if the video does well enough, it'll keep showing it to them and the people who are following you will get to see it. Mm-hmm. But if it if it doesn't get any views, they're not gonna, it's not gonna end up on the for you page of people following you. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I used to post three videos a day for like yeah. the first three or four months and I had like a little just like alarm on my phone at three times a day I'd post at the exact same time three times a day and now I'm a little bit more casual with it but at that time it was just kind of like fun for me to see if I could kind of hit the same times each day and and see how they go and granted most of those videos are five to ten seconds you know they're short videos so it didn't take a lot of time or energy for me to create them Mm, you know so Mm. three videos a day sounds like a lot but it you can actually batch a whole week's worth of videos in like 20 minutes yeah Mm. so let's talk about that let's talk about some of the types of videos that you put out there these things like that you explain the challenges and duets and reactions yeah yeah. whatever there's so many different ways you can use TikTok and put videos out. There's some people who have accounts where they mostly just speak. For me, you rarely see me speaking. And that's because I have two tiny people. And usually whatever TikTok you're watching, there's two children screaming in the background. And that's why I do mostly lip syncing. (laughs) It's not, Mm -hmm. it's the the tactic isn't beyond that, that I just, um, you know, a busy mom who has children shouting in the background. So can't be talking always. 
Um, but so there's lots of different kinds of videos. I really like the videos where you use a trending sound. So it could be just music and somebody's face with like well-timed words appearing over their head, or it could be some, you know, a funny sound from a movie and you're lip syncing to the actors who are saying those funny lines and making it somehow relevant to being an author. Yeah. Um, or it could be you just speaking just as we are now, you know, a short little clip of like, what do you think about this? Or how did you do that? Or what would be a good name for a prince or, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. And just asking people things or sharing stuff like that. And then you also have the features to duet a video where you can have the video you've just watched, you can duet it. So it will play the video that you just watched and your reaction to it side by side together. Um, and so then those are duets. So I quite often will do that if somebody leaves a really lovely review of my book or makes some sort of fan art or something, I'll duet those videos and react to them. Um, or you can also do something called stitch, which is you get the first five seconds of someone's video and then you stitch it and it goes over to your video. So if I was going to stitch one of your videos that was, you know, which platform do you publish on? You know, mm -hmm. I would stitch those five seconds and then say, well, what I do is, mm -hmm. and then kind of launch into my own video. Mm -hmm. um, so those are just some of the different kinds of videos you can make. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever done challenge videos? Are they ones that you've, you get into? Uh, not hugely. Sometimes. I mean, you know, sometimes there's just like, <laughs> There's just funny ones of, you know, people like, like I've done one where I've just sat in the shower with my clothes on with the water <laughs> pouring over me and slow zooming into my face, you know, thinking about like how I still have to write the book of the ideas in my head, you know, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, and so I will do those kind of challenges or like little, you know, some of the little dance things, or there's certain filters that you can have, which are mm -hmm. basically like, some of them are just like makeup, you know, you can put like, which is great because- Oh my like, God, I love the makeup ones. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the only time I wear makeup is on TikTok. Yeah. You know? yeah. Sometimes I'll get people saying, oh, your eyeliner is so good. And I'm like, yeah, I, I wish I could actually do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you, can you layer them? Funny. Just can you layer those? I can't. Can you only use one. I know of some people who have the feature to be able to like layer um, green screen ones with other ones, but I don't have access mm. to that. So I don't know if there's some trick I'm missing, but sometimes, uh, especially in New Zealand, we don't get all of the features mm. uh, that they get other places. Like if you're in the US, you're uh, creation buttons all look different so oh, okay. um, what we're seeing is different than what creators in the U.S. are seeing so yeah I'm still waiting for like certain features you know it took us a long time to get captions the captions feature here oh. uh, when other countries had it for a lot longer so I'd have to hand write out my captions for a long time oh. yeah when I was speaking and now you can just press the little button and it'll auto caption it. So if somebody listening to this and they, they haven't used TikTok at all, they're questioning, how do you make all these videos? Do you need specialist equipment to no. or camera? I mean, some people you see start off with their kind of like, you know, poor lighting and, you know, in a bun and a hoodie, which is most of my videos still. And then they graduate on to like ring lights and, you know, fancy microphones of this high production quality. But that's, that's just really not my, my vibe. That's not my energy at all. So I just use my phone. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, the most I might do is wipe the camera. Yeah. <laughs> it's really dirty if my children's grubby hands have been playing with it. Yes. Um, but I do everything within the TikTok app. There are editing apps you can download to do fancier things, but I find you can do pretty much anything you want to do, mm -hmm. you know, within reason in the TikTok mm -hmm. app itself. So yeah. you mm -hmm. can edit videos, you can record at different times and splice together mm -hmm. things. You can add in filters and voiceovers and captions and stickers and 
just just about anything you would want to do just within yeah. the app itself so so it's pretty accessible you don't need any yeah. you know you can use so when you talked about batching Ali how do you go mm. about batching those things so you're not shooting out like by mistake <laughs> 1500 <Yeah>. hours of <laughs> video you just recorded on your app well so you can save videos in your drafts there's ah. like a little drafts folder okay. and I think I have like a hundred drafts wow. <laughs> a lot of them are just uh my face staring at the camera um and a note that says what the sound is um that I can then come back to later so if I'm scrolling through TikTok videos and I see some sort of transition video for example of maybe somebody going from like not dressed up to dressed up you know mm -hmm. like the and the music yeah. is starts off very slow and then the beat drops and it's like boom this gorgeous gown or something um I will save those sounds in my drafts and put a note like upbeat reveal over the top of it mm -hmm. and then I'll save it for when I have an announcement or a cover reveal or something like that and mm -hmm. it's amazing how much that music can just hype people mm -hmm. up for you mm -hmm. you don't even have to get them excited they're just excited by virtue of the sound because doesn't yeah. it it feels so good you know like yeah. when you're at a concert or mm -hmm. wanting to go dance you go oh this song and everybody has to sing along to the chorus you know so I will literally just save those sounds and when I have a cover reveal do my face excited for the quiet bit and then boom when the bass drops my cover and the reaction people have from that is like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, I need that. And it's done all of the excitement building for me, you know? So yeah. using the music to get people excited is like a, just such a great easy way of using TikTok with well-timed transitions or, you know, there's something, um, I think it really just like boosts our dopamine when we Absolutely. see yeah. words placed on the screen to a mm -hmm. beat you know yeah. it's yeah. like keeping the rhythm and yeah. it could just be you know like swords castles yeah. you know fantasy and that's it yeah. <laughs> and people are like "Ooh, yes I want that you know because it sounds good and it's well yeah. timed yeah. um so, so if, if, if they don't have the um access to putting a link up with you know they haven't got the thousand followers or whatever mm -hmm. um how do you get them to buy a book yeah I mean I think getting to a thousand followers if you're following people mm -hmm. who follow people back I think mm -hmm. you can get there pretty quickly right. um and then building from there is a lot harder but I would say like focus that energy on getting that because then once you have that link it's a lot easier to kind of convert okay. to pre-orders or sales or signups or whatever it may be because it's just that one less hurdle they don't have to go google your uh right. website or things like that they can just automatically go to it so how did you get like have any other tips to how to get to that thousand aside from following people who follow back is there yeah yeah just well I I just started posting just silly videos you know mm -hmm. but also I talked about how much I enjoyed being a part of the community yeah. like there's just so many amazing like readers and authors on book talk and they're all really lovely, you know, they're like, you know, 99%, there's 1% who are kind of terrible, but the 99% of them are just the most fantastic, supportive, encouraging people. And you just need to engage with them. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to like their videos and comment on their videos and follow them and, yeah. you know, um, build relationships with people and then they will follow you back. And so I, my first video that kind of went like a little mini viral, you know, like a thousand views or something mm -hmm. when I had just started out was me saying how much I appreciated kind of finding my people on mm -hmm. TikTok. Uh, because where I live in my town, I didn't know anybody who wrote stories and loved writing. And mm -hmm. I didn't know, you know, didn't have any local friends to connect with. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I come on book talk and I'm like, oh, like, you know, here they are, here are my people. They want to be silly and talk about books. Like this is the best. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that was the like first thing that really kind of clicked me into the community was just sharing my appreciation of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, but what, and then once you have that link in your bio it's much easier to then direct people to it because it, right. it you can have all of your links in that one link mm -hmm. um and so you can have you know pre-order this book sign up to my newsletter all of the yeah all of the things someone might want in that link so yeah it's worth Sweet. having 
yeah, for sure. it. Yeah. Yeah. So and how my, do you do that? Well, sorry, how do you do that link? Is that through Linktree you do yours? Yeah, I do mine link.bio, but yeah. you know, there's Linktree, yeah. there, there's a million different yeah. ones for that. But yeah, you can have one of those and then that's a really easy shorthand for people finding all the things. And most people by now know that that's where they go to find things. You don't even yeah. really have to tell them. They know yeah. to go to go look there. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what about so what are the elements on there so we've talked about say hashtags we've talked about the sound what about like titles in mm, are they yeah. important or i i mean it it depends on how much you need them to stick around for a payoff later you know so you don't want to give them much time to be to give them many opportunities to scroll right so um if you have a title saying like you know that one time when or you know something it, it's basically copy you know it's writing something that's catchy that will hook people in that will keep them watching to see what you're doing you know for example if i say like cover reveal people are gonna wait because they want to see what the cover is you know but if it's just me lip syncing to a song and they don't know <laughs> that a cover is coming they might just keep scrolling because they don't realize it's yeah. coming so yeah. using those titles and words to um tell people what they're going to get out of the video or to just something exciting to hook them in or like you know this was so embarrassing or this was really funny and uh -huh. made me laugh today or this mm -hmm. took me 10 takes to do before I could do it without laughing you know so, so the title is the thing that sits on the front of the video when people are yeah. scrolling through is that right Am I and you can have those timed as well so you have a little um like button you can use to type out different words that will appear over your video that you've recorded and you can set the duration of those so you can set it to show up halfway through the video or you know you see um some where there are just certain trending sounds where there's like uh, five beats or something where it'll be like, boom, boom, boom. And so if there's three, you might want to put three words up that are timed to those three beats. And so mm -hmm. you can just type out the word like cover and then reveal and just time it so that it shows up right when that beat hits. And so yeah. it's the satisfying little, like using the words to tell people what they're missing from the video. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's cool. Because there's so many different types of video. I almost feel like you could spend oh, totally. an hour going through all the different types. So I think maybe the best way is just to get on there and have a mm -hmm. look. Yeah, but for sure. And I think you find your your groove in it too. You kind of find like, what's fun for me? You know, what oh. gave me a laugh? And, and I think after a while you start to hear it in the sounds that you're mm -hmm. watching, you'll see a video and go, oh, that would be really fun. Like, how could I take this sound about you know, people tripping and make it about writing books, you know, yeah, and how can yeah. I put my own unique spin on it to make it relevant to me? Mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, there was this one uh, sound recently where it was the Smash Mouth song, you know, All Star, and it was a delayed start and someone falling. And, yeah, <laughs> and that was yeah. the video and you see it again and again, you know, so someone falling or running into a wall or, yeah, you know, something hilarious. Happening. Some of those are hilarious. Yeah, like that. And so I took that sound and made that like moment where someone would slam into the wall, me slamming my laptop closed because I was frustrated because I found a plot hole in my book, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so I was taking the trend and using that sound, but using it in my own way to make it about books and writing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, I think we just ask ask how you go about finding the trending things how do you know yeah sure how do you know? there's uh a, at the bottom of your screen there's a way to search for trending hashtags and mm -hmm. sounds so you can find the top 10 trending sounds and the top 10 um yeah you know, well actually like a whole feed of trending hashtags as well for like different challenges and things mm -hmm. i quite often though will just if I'm scrolling through my for you page and seeing videos, if I see two or three different people doing the same sound, it's a pretty good indicator that mm. that sound is really popular right now. And so mm. maybe I should yes. jump on it and do my own yeah. take or spin on that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's usually more of an indicator for me than searching the trending sounds and mm -hmm. seeing who's doing it, or I just might hear it and it just sounds fun. Mm -hmm. And so what I'll do when I hear that, I usually, you know, for a few minutes, maybe 10, 20 minutes in the afternoons when I'm watching cartoons with my kids, I will just be scrolling through TikTok. And if I hear a fun sound, 
I'll save it into my drafts or I might even lip sync it right then, you know, just do a little five second lip sync to that video and then save it in my drafts. And sometimes I'm recording those without even knowing how I'm going to use them. It's just me uh, recording that audio and then going, you know, how am I going to use somebody saying like, no, that's gross, you know? And then it might be like, uh, later I'll come up with an idea of like something about typos or something about, you know, and then Mm. it'll come later. So sometimes I'm even recording them without knowing how I'm going to use them later, but just kind of saving them um, in my little kind of like squirreling them away and then I can have them later when I come up with ideas. Mm. Yeah. That's a really good idea because it is actually Mm. there's some pressure to kind of going, oh God, I've got to think of two things today. Mm. Yes. And and it's actually takes away that, you know, oh I've got 150 sitting in my drafts folder. I just have to exactly find the one that most suits what I feel like or whatever. I think that would be pretty daunting to go twice a day, go, okay, I gotta find another video to do or I gotta find another idea. And so I usually have two or three times a week that I'll just kind of batch up some videos, whether that's recording them or even going as far as like adding the hashtags and all of the things. So it's ready to just post whenever I want it to. Mm, Um, And then when the times come to post them throughout the week, they're already there and ready to go. Um, So it depends if I'm feeling, you know, am I feeling in a TikTok-y mood or Mm. not? And so there's certain days where I don't record any, you know, Mm. several days in a row where I won't record a single one and then I might record 10, you know, in five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah about being in the right zone Um, because and the cool thing about the challenges and that you know you're talking about everyone jumping on a sound and stuff I it's actually a lot of those challenges are curated by TikTok is Mm -hmm. my understanding and people talk about actually it's part of the the cool thing about TikTok because it's encouraging people who wouldn't otherwise um, normally post because they couldn't think of ideas Mm -hmm. and it's giving them something to post around it's going Mm -hmm. here's this idea think of your own take on it and do it and Exactly. TikTok is not a place for (laughs) being unique necessarily. Yeah, it's totally like a writing Mm. prompt where you just go um, like, oh, that sounds fun. How could I do that, you know, very slightly Mm. differently? But, you know, you might see on your page like 20 different people doing roughly the same video with maybe slightly different joke on top of it or a slightly Mm. different wording, but it's all roughly the same. And the fun part of it is just seeing what they're going to do with it. You know, how are they going to play with that same? sound yeah the yeah. different takes like oh this is one guy and I think I, I could be wrong but I think he was like the gay goth and he's just dude oh, okay. yeah. and he's goth and he's clearly he's obviously gay as well and he was doing the Disney one the Disney oh, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was finding out which way. Disney character it was just yeah. really funny because it was kind of like the opposite of everything that you know you think this goth guy would want to you know it was just yeah. it was hilarious and I love just, that yeah yeah that's what's yeah. cool it's like how the different people's takes on yeah. the different kind of things that you can do yeah exactly and and you can tell everybody's having fun with it it's exciting when you go oh here's this new thing that everybody's doing how can I make that about being an author and how can I make that or it might be uh you know maybe it's one of your characters saying those things you know like if it's somebody who just wants to go to bed and you have this side character who's always talking about falling asleep you know you could Uh just be like this is my character in this moment you know yeah Yeah, I did get a bit confused with some of the author posts where they're kind of pretending to be their characters mm-hmm. and I got and I was like oh is that what they are oh. but then I realized at the end oh no no that was their character from the book and there were all sorts yeah, of kind of some people do that to try and trick you uh yeah. and then some people just don't understand that they're not communicating it properly yeah. and I yeah. think that it, it's one of those things again where for me with my page I'm always trying to make sure people are in on the joke with me yeah um so I'm never trying to trick people so I'm always saying like you know my character yeah. when this, this happened yeah. you know yeah yeah. There is a downfall to, to trying to be too clever. Yeah. yeah. In such yeah, a short agree. space of time. You know? yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's oh it's sometimes hard to convey tone mm. in a mm. in a short video as well. So yeah. So always knowing like for me that it's kind of like a filter before I ever post anything is mm. is thinking about, you know, in the same way when we're writing a book, we think about how do we want our readers to feel. We think about mm. how do I want my followers to feel mm. seeing this mm. video. Do they, you know, because sometimes I, I think just that one little question would save a lot of people from posting some, <laughs> some <laughs> not so Absolutely. great things yeah. and make Excellent. people feel ashamed of themselves or embarrassed yeah. or sad mm-hmm. or angry or confused. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing that's probably not what they want 
their readers to associate with them in their books, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, I think, I wonder in some cases where people have gotten used to that as a concept when you're in book talk mm-hmm. and you kind of, the author is kind of, I don't know, telling you the story, but it's still, yeah, I was confused by it, but that was just, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about um, maybe TikTok etiquette, like a little mm-hmm. bit about what, when you're first coming onto TikTok as an author, what should you be thinking yeah. about? How, what kind of posts and how do we make sure that we're doing it? Yeah, I think way. it's important to be thinking about what kind of energy you want people to be getting from me. I hope when people see my face pop up on their video feed that they're going to think like, oh, this is going to be funny or silly mm-hmm. or a bit goofy yeah. and yeah. lighthearted or emotional and appreciative, you know, and that kind of like gratitude towards them. Um, and never, if I showed up and was, you know, attacking people or being aggressive in some way, I think that would probably shock and upset people and probably put them off following yeah. me, you know, because that's not the, my brand and it's not who I am. Granted, there are some people who do like great videos that are very sassy, you know, and very mm-hmm. starky and stuff. And that's who they are. And you know, the second you see them, that's what you're getting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but thinking about how do you want to make people feel and who is watching your videos? Who do you want to be watching your videos? Because sometimes I'll see videos, for example, of authors who are complaining about having to write their newsletter that Mm -hmm. month. And I'm thinking the people who are watching this video are the people who are subscribed to your newsletter. And now they feel silly for doing it because you're saying that you don't want to be writing this thing for them that you asked them to sign up to. Um, And that's just not a very kind Mm -hmm. way to treat people or their time. Mm -hmm. Uh, That might be better suited towards maybe like a message to an author friend, you know, where we Mm -hmm. all have those moments where we're going, oh, this wasn't fun or this Mm -hmm. was frustrating or something like that, you know, lamenting certain things uh but not towards the people you're asking to be involved yeah, in that, you yeah, know they're not really thinking that this or saying like you know I didn't sell any books today and yeah. and my sales are terrible to the people who have bought your book mm-hmm. and are now feeling like well but I did and mm-hmm. what you know like what about yeah. me I care about you and I'm productive isn't it exactly really? yeah. and you can totally convey the same message in a different way of saying my next goal is to sell this many books or I want to do this next or and flip it on its head and make it a positive thing of like come join me come be involved in this with me as we go out and do this next great thing instead of making the people who are watching it feel like they're not enough you're inviting them to come to the next level you know yeah 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 yeah. I think a lot of authors need to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> keep hearing that because I think that's for any any social media. Though, I agree. Right? Like, like it's you don't you want to see the sausage, not how the sausage is made as a yeah, reader. Exactly. You know, and you don't I I just think it's bad form to be complaining mm. about readers not fulfilling your expectations as an author. Like or yeah. attacking readers or complaining yeah. about readers or mm. Or telling them they don't like what you're writing instead of Mm. trying to find the people who do like what you're Mm. writing. Or telling them they're dumb for not liking your writing. Too much drama. Too much drama is not a good thing. Well, (laughs) and you think that's what people are going to associate with you. And I think that sometimes people confuse getting attention on social media with converting to sales. And it does that's not how it works. People might see something and be pulled in by the drama of it and watch Mm. all of your videos but they're not going out and buying your book the next day. They're no, just watching they're that. watching the train wreck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so thinking about that, and especially in a world where we post most of our lives online, yeah, yeah. we're not always thinking about, is this like for my readers or is this just for me as a person mm-hmm. and not yeah. really relevant to them? Yeah. So yeah, like just putting that business hat on for a minute and, you know, you can kind of like tongue in cheek sort of complain by using a funny sound of like oh no you know the world is ending because I haven't finished this draft yet and it's mm-hmm. due to the editor and it's funny and it's kind of lighthearted, and your readers are pulled into like oh no this kind of panic which is very different than you actually saying this is awful and I hate everything and you know and it's, it's your it, fault <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I mean that's the biggest thing because I've definitely posted videos where I was genuinely upset or frustrated with something Mm. but it was never at the people who follow me or watch my videos it was always something that they were 
in on mm-hmm. and they were a part of the community with and I always treat them with gratitude and appreciation because yeah. I think especially on platforms like TikTok where people can see your face and hear you speaking they can get a sense of what you're trying to do and I never want people to feel like they're there to give me something yeah. I'm there to give them something I'm there to give them stories and funny videos and all of this content and I appreciate them for being there. And mm-hmm. I think some people you see jump onto the platform and go, buy my book, you know, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. click this link, buy this thing. And it's all very aggressive. And that, I mean, first of all, doesn't suit my personality at all. But also I've never once said buy my book ever mm-hmm. in the entire time I've been on uh, TikTok and I'm doing quite well now and very happy with that. But I might say, you know, in a, funny video like pre-order live now or something like that but I've never once said go buy this to people and I think that people think you have to do that in order to get them to click through to buying something mm-hmm. yeah it's really mm-hmm. good advice so do you think that has um like being on TikTok for you has resulted in sales for your books oh 100 you percent yeah, yeah for sure I mean I really kind of started off with this five-year plan of like all of yeah. these different platforms I was going to expand out into and all of these different things and instead I realized TikTok was working for me and I just doubled down on there so I'm not on I have a Facebook group now um which is is nice but other than that I'm only on TikTok and so I went from thinking you know I would have a newsletter and maybe yeah. get a handful of people might read my first book and then maybe I'd get a little bit more next year and you know kind of going from that to having hundreds of pre-orders on my first book mm. um and going oh wow okay <laughs> this is mm. this is going to be a thing um and and running with it yeah yeah, yeah. it makes total sense let's do more of what works than try exactly. to speak yourself too thin over yeah. everything you know? yeah. yeah well I mean isn't that a question we ask ourselves all the Always. time is is this better spent than writing the next book is this time you know I could start an Instagram account maybe one day I will when my kids are bigger and I have more time but for right now I think like I can make TikToks while I'm playing with them and I enjoy it and it's fun for me and it feels like a nice thing to do and people know and can tell from my videos that I enjoy it and I'm having fun so that seems to be working for me. So I'm not going to put my energy into all these, you know, it would take me two hours to create a Canva graphic that didn't look Mm -hmm. terrible, or I could do all of my TikToks for two weeks and that amount of time. So Mm -hmm. yeah, Mm -hmm. it just, it just made more sense from someone who's quite time poor. Yeah. 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 And you've got to write in amongst all that, right? Like you've got to be. Exactly. I mean, my, the High Mountain Court, my first book was written at 4 a.m. on my kitchen table before my kids woke up Um, and now we've you know been able to repuzzle our days a little bit more so that I have a little bit more um, you know working time and things like that now that I'm making an income from my writing and can kind of like you know restructure our day so that's Mm -hmm. good now I have a desk you know (laughs) I'm I'm still waking up pretty early to do it before my kids but when 10 a.m. rolls around it's time to shut everything off and and be Mm. with them and be mom uh so that was you know for me I was like how much can I do within this time because that time isn't flexible you know yeah yeah Mm, that's That's ultimate being focused right like when you don't have the time you have to be focused and just do the most important things right yeah yeah a hundred percent and and for me I kept thinking you know I'm I'm you know, the Clifton strengths, the input is very high for me. Um, number one. one. I'm yeah. number one too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I like to know all the things. I like to read all the books. I do all the self-publishing courses and, mm-hmm. you know, have notebooks of notes on how to run advertisements and do different forms of social media that one day I might pull all of those levers. But for right now, I'm quite happy with how things are going just using TikTok. And I kind of want to see how far I can take that before I start pulling more of those levers. So how many books do you write a year? La- so I published uh, The High Mountain Court in August and then my second book in November. Mm-hmm. And then my next book's coming out in April of this year. I'll have right. three books out this year. So nice. And fantasy length books. And then I'll also have four novellas. So wow. right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a few busy. Yeah. That, that's yeah. busy. That I'm so what's lucky that I can write pretty 
quickly uh like 120k yeah, that's mm, yeah. yeah. so not epic and not epic no. you know not 300 it's still pretty big pretty yeah. Yeah. but yeah. pretty chunky so yeah so yeah and um I kind of I like that length that's a good length for me and I uh, for me that it's the editing time that takes a lot of time but just the revisions before it even goes to the first editor is takes a lot of time for me yeah. but the writing itself I can do pretty quickly so mm-hmm. that's good but I'm I'm kind of at going at the pace where it's quick but not unsustainable you know mm-hmm. and I think that's yeah, the ba- yeah. aren't we all constantly yeah. doing that balance yeah. of trying to yeah. figure out how quickly can I release books without burning out or feeling yeah. uh mm-hmm. dissatisfied you yeah. know so yeah. yeah I'm just amazed that you're even doing any of this I remember when my daughter was under <laughs> oh. five my brain was like mush and I was <laughs> Like I could have thought of writing three books in in that time, and you've got two of them. Like, yeah, oh five gosh. and three, and yeah. um, that my five year old decided she was going to homeschool too. So we don't have they don't go anywhere else. They're here <gasps> all the time. So yeah. we we just started recently getting a babysitter to come a couple mornings a week for mm-hmm. a few hours. Um, so I have a little bit more time to do some more yeah. of the business side of things. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, just making it all happening by having my husband starts his day at 10. And I wake up at five. And so between the two of us, we're able to make it work so, yeah, yeah. Wow. take my head off to you absolutely wow. that's impressive Man, that is so wow yeah. clearly I need to get out of bed earlier yeah. Yeah. I'm starting to feel a bit lazy too actually yeah. I'm not getting up sleeping, in. Anymore, sleeping yeah. until 6 30 oh my gosh no, but I have another couple of years though yeah. you know in I've another three years that. it might be a completely different story <laughs> but I yeah. think the first couple of years I knew yeah, I wanted absolutely. to hustle a bit yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yes yeah. so, so just, oh sorry I was just gonna say so we've talked about I think a general overview I just wanted are there other authors aside from yourself like everyone listening should go look up AK Mulford but Mm. um other authors that you know are doing well on TikTok that people could be looking at to give them examples um, yeah sure um Lillian Lark is fantastic Mm -hmm. she has a great TikTok account and you can tell like it's just very well curated all of her videos Um, are fantastic Mm -hmm. you know there's some really big authors who are on TikTok like um the Zodiac Academy authors Caroline Mm -hmm. Peckham and Susan Valenti have like these great uh, videos yeah Yeah. they're fantastic Katie Robert is on there Uh, Colleen Hoover is huge on TikTok and we're friends and it's super cool (laughs) she friended me I posted a whole TikTok freaking out about that but um (laughs) you know E.L. James um and uh yeah who else there's so I mean there's so many people and Malcolm you had on the show yeah and Malcolm Mm -hmm. um another Kiwi author she lives in Australia but she's still a Kiwi is Emma Jones Uh, she's friends with Anne and she's she's really good on there as well um Jamie Albright who's another um romance author fellow podcaster Jenna Wolfhart, she's a fantasy romance author. She's yeah. doing pretty well on there too. So if you're There's a nonfiction so writer um listening to this, somebody that does really well with their non-fiction, if you like, head on is um an account called Miss Excel. So she teaches Excel the program, Excel. She's fantastic. So there are so um, many specific TikTok accounts that yeah. aren't book based that yeah. are yeah. would be are excellent to kind yeah. of like get involved in and market mm-hmm. towards I saw someone you know a common misconception is that only spicy books do well on mm. book talk which is just going to ask that is mm. you know is yeah it's it's not true and um you know I think there's what like I think I wrote it down how many three billion people downloaded the app by really 2021 wow. people are there so for example if you write epic fantasy there's lord of the rings talk you know what i mean there's accounts <laughs> that have millions of followers where they speak elvish and they talk about different parts of lord of the rings if you tap into even a very small percentage of those people mm-hmm. you're going to have a great readership from that you know mm-hmm. or there might be people who do cosplays of swords and dressing up yeah. and things like that and mm-hmm. if you write fantasy those are great people to kind of like interact with you know and so it really just depends on your, you know, maybe you write cozy mysteries and there's like different baking accounts that have like really cool apple pie recipes and you might have apple pie recipes in the back of your book and you might want to do that one of those videos, you know. I thought you were going to say these different murder accounts. Oh, yeah. Well, there are. There are. So many true crime accounts. Are. 
yeah so many true crime accounts <gasps> I love yeah. the true crime accounts oh my yeah, goodness yeah. Oh, so oh. I mean there's there's really like something for everybody and I think mm-hmm. it's just a matter of looking for them and interacting yeah. with them and going yeah. if my readers like my books they'll also like uh-huh. these things you yeah know, these mm-hmm. accounts. Same with tv shows probably or movies or oh, movie totally. franchises that kind of thing one of the things I noticed that was I was just going to ask um you go on live Uh, on a regular schedule can you talk Mm -hmm. a little bit about that perhaps yeah sure so as soon as you get a thousand followers you can Mm -hmm. go live I usually do what's called a live duet where I go live Mm -hmm. with another person and we're side by side and chatting and um and you know for anybody listening I'm always open to like going live and chatting with people I have authors who are nervous to go live and I always offer like I'll go live with you and we can just talk about books for a little bit you know it's a much easier than kind of staring at your own face and hoping somebody will comment and it's a little bit (laughs) nerve-wracking until you've done it a few times and you know people will show up and then you feel a little bit more okay but so I usually do live duets and I have a couple writing friends who every week it's kind of like instead of us checking in on a zoom call we check in on a tiktok live and we talk about writing and different things um an author friend of mine and i have a podcast indies fully booked and on saturdays we do what's called indies office hours and we just have people come in and ask us you know what is ku you know or something like that and we answer them so we just are hanging out and making ourselves available to answer self-publishing questions or what did we do about a certain thing and how long just being is it there. for? How long do you go on live for? It really depends. I, if if we get chatting, sometimes it can be several hours just because, you know, yeah. friends going off chatting, but usually it's oh my gosh. an hour, you know. Oh, wow. Okay. But I'm, I'm doing it while, whilst also parenting. So usually I'm like cooking and uh, there's children in the background <laughs> shouting and, you know, yeah. it's not like I'm setting aside that time necessarily yeah. in, yeah. in the same way that some people might want to do. So for me, it, it's a great way to, um, you know, also when you're live that your videos get shown to different people on the for you page and usually well, I don't know if this is happening so much anymore, but you used to get a, quite a good boost in followers for the amount of time that you're on live for. Mm. So it's it's worth dabbling around with that. Usually your video gets pushed out a little more if you're doing the lives. So it's beneficial from that perspective too. But also mm. it's just a really great way of connecting with your readers. You know, people yeah. will pop in and ask you questions. And if they know that you're live at certain times, it's a great way for them to say like, oh, I, you know, I didn't get this newsletter, right? You know, I'm looking for this thing or what's going to happen next, you know? So, yeah. It's so cool. What if you're really, really averse to having your face on TikTok? Is that a must for an author? I wouldn't say it's a must, but I do think that accounts where you see people's faces Mm -hmm. do better because Mm -hmm. you're there's something about face-to-face interaction where you feel like you know the person you feel like you're you know the people I've connected with on TikTok I feel like are genuine friends even though we've never met in real life and you get a real sense of how you know someone through that Mm -hmm. so I do think if if you can give it a go it's -hmm. good to have that face-to-face and you can even put a filter on so that it doesn't even look like you you know half the time I have blue eyes and blonde hair and freckles yeah Yeah. (laughs) doesn't look anything like me you know um so if we want to do that you can do that too but there are some accounts where it is just people flipping through books with like cool graphics and things like that Mm. but I do think that you have to work a little harder to get those videos to be shown Mm -hmm. I see a lot of accounts where authors will start and be posting mostly like Instagram kind of content of you know cool beautiful their book with some flowers and you know things like that and then um, they're not getting much engagement and then cut to two months later and they're like "Ah!" you know silly TikTok videos and just completely letting loose and having fun and and people are having fun with them yeah Mm -hmm. for sure so I think that that is the difference between other social media platforms and TikTok is that other social media platforms are more about conveying your genre so 
you know, like this is all fantasy and it's, you know, there's lots of swords and flowers and it's all medieval and romantic. Whereas TikTok is more about connecting with other people who like reading that genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not so much about me needing to put on medieval gowns and riding horses. Mm-hmm. It's me uh, drinking coffee and talking about how I don't have enough time to read the books I want to read, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's it's like realness, right? Like it's, yeah. it's like, we don't want the perfectly done made up person or you, you just want the real people you want to know exactly. what that make that real genuine connection yeah. real people with a filter on I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> those filters are cool yeah. though yeah and then you, I got you get out of the shower and you're looking like ah, and then you go boom jelly yeah. look and there I am you know like, <laughs> exactly <laughs> what I'm, makeup do I want today <laughs> who do you choose so yeah. I want to figure other... out how to do the makeup and one of the other things. But anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So one of the things I think that's for anybody that's completely new to TikTok and they're listening to us talking and they're saying all of these videos and they're used to social media where you put something out and then it disappears into the ether and it's kind mm-hmm. of a one and done. I think a really important difference about TikTok to other social media is that the video can still live on <laughs> and still be seen months, can't it, mm-hmm. after it was originally created? Yeah, I've had people say, like, this ARC sign up isn't in your bio anymore. And I'm like, this was from six months ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, this book uh, is no longer 99 cents. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. well, it's actually three months yeah. ago. Okay. So that is a trick if you're advertising a sale to be mindful of that and maybe put in perhaps a date around exactly. that. Or, exactly. you know. I mean, it does show you the date that that TikTok is yeah, posted but, at the bottom too. But having, yeah. yeah, having some sort of like, you know, for today, February 2nd or whatever <laughs> this book is on sale so that they um, know what it is but usually your videos really get mostly interacted with in the first 24 hours 48 hours and then it's very very rare that I'll have someone like or comment on a video that's more than a month old Mm. but it it does live on like you were saying longer and especially if it's one that's doing well or is funny TikTok will keep pushing it out for a long time so yeah. yeah Just when you're talking about like that text in the bottom of it, how like mm. do, do, do you put text there all the time or do you ignore it? Do you just put hashtags? Like it depends. Sometimes I'll just put emojis, you know, if it's just something silly, I'll just put a silly emoji face. And then mm. sometimes it'll be like, you know, this is giving me real like Renwick, who's a character in my books, vibes or something, you know, like some yeah. something that's just a little like note of what this video is, or like go check this out. This is so cool. This person doing this thing you know Mm -hmm. um so it really depends but I will say that I find if you're tagging people you can kind of write like at this person in um on your video I it's better to do it in the comments than on the video itself because that tends to just for some reason not show up to as many people than if you comment it and uh you can do what's called pinning a comment to the top of your comment section so Um, for example, I did a video that was like a montage of these created characters from one of my books. And then in the comments, I pinned the top comment saying like, you can see these like not rapidly, um, just the the static images in my Facebook group. Mm -hmm. And then I had heaps of people signing up to my Facebook group just from that pinned Mm -hmm. comment at the top of that thing, you know, so I never said join my Facebook group. I just said, if you want to see this, you can see it over here. And that was my way of saying, I have a Facebook group. You know? mm, love that. Yeah. Love yeah, that. How awesome. do you handle the comments, the wrangling? Because I'm, mm. I'm assuming that not all supportive (laughs) no I have a kind of like zero tolerance for um hateful comments and things on my page I don't entertain it and I don't get deep into any drama so if it's kind of like a you know meh comment I'll just ignore it and if it's something really inappropriate I'll block the person and then their comment disappears but usually it's only the videos that are that go, get a lot of views, like over 5,000 views, 10,000 views, where you start to get those people who probably shouldn't have been shown yeah. your video showing up and saying things. So for me, my way is to just, just um, 
get rid of them, do away with it, uh, delete any like really inappropriate comments mm-hmm. or things like that. Because mm-hmm. again, it's that, how do you want to make people feel? I'm mm-hmm. not in the business of creating drama, no. except for in my books, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and so I don't want people every time they see my face to go like, you know, oh no, yeah. she's going to be tearing into someone again today, she's or she's going to be, hot. yeah, yeah. <laughs> pulling, you know, commenting on this comment and going after somebody like that's not how I want to make people feel. So I just, mm-hmm. I just get rid of those uh, comments. But it, to be honest, it doesn't happen that often. It mm-hmm. happens occasionally, and it's not very nice. But I think that's the same with all social media. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, the majority of people are really, really lovely and incredibly encouraging and supportive. And I encourage people to engage with those people, like reply to their comments, you yeah. know, like their comments, talk to them, because um, there are people who took the time to engage yeah, with you. Absolutely. Um, whereas on other social media platforms, I think it is a little more static. You can just throw something up and hope people see it and mm. leave it at that. You don't necessarily need to engage quite as much. But for me, I like to reply to people's mm. comments. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah absolutely. definitely. Cool. All right. So we're running into the end of the time for the interview. But Azir, just any any last tips or any last things that you want to mm. um, give to our listeners? Oh gosh, I don't know. Have fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah give it a go. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a fun place to be. Yeah. And like, you know, try it and then and, and have fun with it and enjoy it. And the other thing I would say is be thinking about how you can use the momentum of what you're posting to get people to do whatever action you're looking for. So whether that's going to pre-order a book or signing up to your ARCs or whatever that may be, think about how you can use TikTok and the energy of TikTok to do that for you instead of asking people to do it. So like, for example, when I wanted to get people to sign up to my ARC team, I had the trending video at the time with Shania Twain's song Mm -hmm. and um the first line is let's go girls you know and so it was just me going let's go girls and then over my head it says arc signups you know and people are like yeah let's you know (laughs) just let's go that's fun um you know think about ways that you can do that so that you're not missing the opportunity if that video ends up going viral or getting pushed out to a lot of people that they know that there's a secondary action Mm -hmm. they can take yeah yeah Um, that's the difference between just making funny videos and using those funny videos to support your business yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, it's really clever so it goes without saying that you've got to follow ak mulford on tiktok (laughs) just saying (laughs) and us yes i was so excited when i saw you pop up yeah (laughs) i'll try and do better (laughs) i'm on there but it's very yeah. um I'm just starting out I'm just learning but it is fun actually like I, fun. I was I didn't do it for a long time because I was like oh I have to make videos and it sounds really hassle and then we get on there and it's actually this set up so mm. well mm. to actually do stuff there's all the effects you just have to use one of the effects and do a funny video you know like you mm. they have themed stuff there's the challenges you can go find a challenge it and do something from that too serious. Yeah. No, I've, got two, I've got two names and it's quite <laughs> hard to juggle two names to be honest with you I don't know what I'm doing half the time but it's fun. You could just do it. the same thing again, too. Yeah, yeah, but then what about the same people who go to both? Doesn't it matter. took me a while to realize they were both you. I was like, she looks so much like Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> My- I think you should say that, actually. A friend mm. actually got hold of me and go, this woman, she's using all of your stuff. And I'm like, that's me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's classic. Yeah. Well, at least you took the time and yeah, enough, for yeah, sure, to right? warn you yeah. about this other yeah. woman stealing your healing yeah, your books classic <laughs> anyway so um ali where can you be found aside from tiktok yeah so you can find me on tiktok at ak milford author and you can find me on my website ak milford.com and i'm also on facebook at ak milford nice awesome fantastic and where can we be found as well, the spa we, girls not, not tiktok t- yet well you can find girls. us individually on tiktok with these these guys i'm under a throw a burner pen name on there that i use to stalk people basically but that's not weird at all but you can find us at sparkgirlspodcast.com <laughs> and we are on facebook and twitter at Sparkgirls podcast and youtube yeah so come along and yeah check us out on youtube check us out yeah. there. <laughs> It was yeah. for the YouTube people that thing that I just did that no one who's oh, listening to the audio so would be able to yeah. see. So go to our YouTube, go to YouTube channel. And they are now, they lucky they didn't see it. That's all no, I'm No, no, I was doing a teaser and they're supposed to go and 
Now you ruined uh, it by saying uh, no one wants to see what I just oh, did. Right, oh. All right, no, but then they'll make them want to see it. It was okay. shocking. It was shocking. It was shocking. It was shocking. shocking. Oh, I, see. That's I would have. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we're devolving into nothingness. So. Sorry, Ellie. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, listeners. I love Sorry. it. <laughs> but thank you all for listening to another episode of Spa Girls Podcast. Thanks for joining us, um, Ellie. And you, we will be back again next week, same time, same place. But for now, keep Bye. well. Bye. Bye. Bye.